Coppin's dope jacket that Tyus is rocking tonight. Maybe yes. That's, maybe that's just a lot of positives tonight. There's a lot going a lot on. I like. Tonight's show is brought to you by Superbook. Despite two massive wins the last couple of weeks, the Ravens are somehow still just the second choice to win it all. I don't know how I feel about that. You can still get them at plus 350 at Superbook. If you believe another Purple Festivus is coming, download the Superbook app or visit Superbook.com. Use the code GlennClark23 when you sign up to receive a same-day first bet match up to $250, win or lose. That's a jacket right there. That's a jacket. That is a jacket. I think, I think your guests might feel a way about that, Tyus. I like it, man. You I like it. you want to introduce everybody to who came out tonight? Yeah, man. This guy is a up and coming player for us. Very excited to see him play in the upcoming years. I mean, works his butt off each and every day. Does everything that you know the coaches, the players say, and you know he's been putting some great stuff on film, and I can't wait to see him on there. So that guy is Malik Ham. Appreciate it. Appreciate y'all for having me. You gotta, yeah. you gotta reintroduce him. Yeah, yeah we gotta. This get is him. this is Baltimore's very own. There we go. Yes, there we go. Yeah. What is it? He's he's Baltimore, West Baltimore, where? East Baltimore, East man. Baltimore, East Side. He's so baby. We got city in the house, man. Let's go. Well, you don't know, Tyus, or maybe you figured that out because you've been here for a few years. A lot of places in the country, you ask someone where they went to school. You're asking them where they went to college, right? It ain't like that around here. Around here, you ask someone where they went to school. Like, I'll do this. Malik, where'd you go to school? I went to city, man. Yeah. So city forever, man. City forever. You're gonna have to explain to me what that means. We taught, we taught, we say our high schools. That's the way it is. When somebody asks yeah. you in Baltimore, where did you go to school? What they're asking you is where did you go to high, high school? school. Not college. Oh. Yeah. They're asking oh, you the where you went. Now, it's even more confusing because Malik went to City College, and now <laughs> we're going to get really, like, we're going to go a step too far trying to explain all of it. But that's what, in this town, you're asking if you ask somebody where they went to school is where'd you go to high school. Okay. okay. You take a lot of pride in your high school. Right? It's a big deal. You take a lot of pride. Is this, like, a city or, like, county? Is okay, like I'm glad you asked that. Because I've heard about I've heard about that part. Well, too. there's actually a big rivalry that involves city, so much so that Malik has actually <clears throat> it might have come to blows at some point during the course of his <laughs> prep wow. career. I think you should handle the interview now, actually. Yeah, man. I think you should ask Malik about what it was like to face Polly. Yeah. Tell I mean, me, tell me about that. I mean, it was easy. We beat him. I never lost to Polly. Polly is our uh they like our rivalry school. It's like how you would look at the Steelers, kind of. Oh, wow. Okay. So they basically are Steelers. And uh, it's a big thing. The longest play high school rivalry, city, city versus Poly. And, uh, in the country. Know, yeah, in the country. In the country. Yeah, it's yeah. the longest high school wait, rivalry wait, in the country. I think it's the third oldest public school rivalry. I think that's what it was. But I, I never lost to them in my, all, for all my four years there. And it sometimes got a little emotion, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, uh, when it's like a close game or like, you know, it's like your last, it's usually like your last kind of game of the season. So you already know how that goes. Is this a place where you play them at M&T Bank or do you play them at the high school? Yeah. Yeah. What, so where did you play? Because I don't think safety. that they play at M&T anymore. Yeah, so uh, my, when I graduated, my last year was the last game that was played at uh, M&T Bank. And uh, it was a good game. You know, we ended up winning. It was real close. You know, uh, but ever since then, now it's played. I think they played at Morgan State and uh, Towson one year. Yeah. But uh, it's a good game. It brings everybody out in the city. And, uh, you know, they be having a tailgate. That's what that's Yo, what everybody pretty much That's where everybody goes. That that's tailgate is not even actually a tailgate. Like, they hold it somewhere else entirely because it's so massive. Yes. Yeah, like, sure. it's yes. so yeah. bad-ass so, crazy. It's a really good time. But yeah. it's a really good time. You'd have thought it was like college, like the way I, you got yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a big deal. Man. So I'm asking this for precautionary reasons. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know when it comes to, like, my high school, you know, we, we can't play them at our high schools anymore because, you know, safety reasons. So oh, yeah. we go to a neutral site. So that's why I was asking. Oh, I got you. Now nah, it's uh pretty. No, nah, we respect each other. Like it ain't, he, he, it ain't like gl that. he's glossing yeah. over a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's it's come to some blows from time. Oh yeah, to time. definitely. Uh, I remember my uh, junior year. We ended up we was fighting on the field against them. 
Oh. And it was at M&T Bank Stadium, too. <laughs> but I, I, it definitely comes Probably close, why they don't have it like, there anymore. Yeah. Like in terms Thanks, of like, Malik. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> but Take like, a shot in heaven that. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of respect, you know, we respect him as like the second best high yeah. school. We, like, <laughs> <laughs> we the best high school for sure in Baltimore. All right. So um, that was awesome. Yeah. That kind of rocked, didn't it? That was really great. Um. Tyce, these last two weeks, I have no doubt that you thought you guys were going to win, that you had all the confidence in the world. But like this, but throttling the best teams in the NFL in back-to-back weeks, yeah. did you know that was coming? I mean, I'm going I'm to speak confidently on our team, man. We, we work super hard during the week. And, you know, kudos to those guys for going out there, you know, dialing in to the, to the uh, game plan for the week. And then just going out there and executing on uh, on Sundays. And, you know, when plays come, we go out there and we take advantage of them. And, you know, we capitalize. And that's kind of what happened in the past few weeks is just us making plays, you know, especially on the defensive side. And, you know, the offense capitalizing, you know, getting us points. And, you know, that works all together as one to, you know, bring out two of the best wins that we've probably had in years. You know? I mean, Reed and I have been around for the entire history of the Ravens. Yeah. I, we Dang, are confident. you ain't got to put my age out there like well, I mean, that. all right, all right, all right. Thank you. Malik's close, almost. He's almost been around for the entire history of the Ravens. <laughs> a couple of years, <laughs> sure. We were talking on the radio show on Monday. I don't think there's ever been a better, given the stakes, given the nature of how you guys, I don't think there's ever been a better back-to-back in the regular season, two weeks in Ravens history. Like, I mean, especially against the top two teams in the NFL. Right, yeah. Not the AFC, not the division, like the NFL. So that's... That's a great accomplishment. It's unbelievable. Yeah, is absolutely. What it is. So, a couple weeks at the after the 49ers game, Patrick Queen said something that reverberated with a lot of people. He said, We play a brand of football people don't want to play. And he mentioned, like, other teams, they're a little cute. They like playing basketball on grass. Yeah. Do you, as you watch, these are the, you know, as you mentioned, these are the best teams in the NFL. Yeah. And they're game for a little while. And then after a little while, it seems like they're not ready for that. Do you sense that, like, what you guys are doing, nobody can handle the style of football that you guys play with? Yeah, I mean, you talk about, you know, a team on the West Coast that's West Coast offenses. You know, defenses ain't the same out there. You talk about Miami, who, you know, plays fast and want to throw the ball to all the fast guys. But, you know, it's something different when you get hit in the mouth, you know, for 60 plays straight you know, on defense and, and on, on offense right? as well, like coming downhill. And, you know, a lot of guys ain't built like that anymore. You know, this ain't the 2000s. This ain't the 90s where, you know, it's hard-nosed football. And that's one thing that we do bring is, you know, physicality. And we take great pride in that. So, I mean, you see, you know, from the jump, when we hit you in the mouth and you have no response, you see the outcome of it. So that's that's the type of brand of football, like PQ said, that we play. It seems like like they're they're good with it for about a quarter. Yeah. Like for about a quarter, they're yeah. like, yeah, we can do this. Yeah. And then somewhere like late in the second quarter, they're like, yo, we got to do this for 60 minutes. Yeah. Like for 60 minutes. Absolutely. We got to get worn. Now nah, we good. How, yeah. how important. I, I don't know if I'm saying important, but how critical of the division that you're already in, does that play a role into how you play against your other opponents? Because, you know, the AFC North is a very blue collar division. Everybody got their hand in the dirt. They, you know, they just, they put their, their, their hat on they got their garb their pale you know what i'm saying it is not it's not necessarily pretty but it gets the job done to the point where you know at one point every team in this division and maybe still is a 500 or above and so when you look at everybody else you know how does playing those guys six times a year play into how you or this division and the toughness of this division play into how well you guys play against other you know shishi fufu opponents <laughs> yeah i mean football ain't supposed to be pretty right you know and i mean obviously you could just see throughout the entire year the schedule and just the records of our division alone like we was one of the if not the top division in the nfl yeah as far as win percentage wins and losses and that just shows you the type of talent that shows you the type of ball that we play out here and you know like i said a lot of teams is not built like that to where you know for five six games out of the year it's gonna be hell 
and you got to figure out a way to win. And when you go through that, when you start playing other teams, it's like, oh, this is a little bit more light. We can actually, <laughs> you know, come at them now and, you know, see how they can handle, you know, playing the style of football. So, you know, that's a kudos to the AFC North and, you know, Cleveland Browns and Steelers and the Bengals, just the type of game that they play that, you know, it shows, it shines a light on this division, this, these group of teams that we can go out there and play physical football and go out here and dominate. Tyus Bowser show press box one Oh five, seven, the fan. If you or a loved one has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit helpmygamblingproblem.org for free confidential services. Malik Han, you grew up here. I mean, I'm assuming you grew up a Ravens fan. Oh yeah, definitely. definitely. You're now on a Super Bowl run. As a Baltimore Raven. Yeah. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah. How do you describe like what this is like as a kid that you were never promised anything? You had to work your ass off to have a chance to do this. Yeah, how do you describe what this is like, not just to be, you know, on a team, to be on your team and to be competing for a chance to get a ring at the end of the year? I mean, like, uh, uh, like you said, it's hard, man. Especially the way I came in as an undrafted free agent. You gotta like, like, like when they say that's like some of the hardest tasks like ever. It, it's probably the hardest thing I had to kind of accomplish in my life. Me, well, me personally, but I mean, uh, like the Ravens themselves. It's just a standard that we got. Like same thing, Tyus was saying. Like, you know, everybody that they bring in the building is is they gonna play like a Raven. You know, they physical and uh. At the end of the day, like uh, when we practicing and all that stuff, like like we we going to war with each other, and I think that's what kind of made us like what we are right now. Because like during camp and uh, OTAs and uh, mini camp, like we had some battles out there between you know offense and defense, and it was everybody. It wasn't just like a few people like doing this that, and the third. You know, everybody had their glimpses, and uh, you know everybody got got, but. Uh, it just helped us, you know, right now, because uh, me personally, one thing I noticed about us is like, you know, we kind of got better throughout the season, like compared to like our first game and our last game. Yeah. I think that uh, kind of like throughout the whole year, we was always like, oh, we could have made a few plays or like we could have we could have made made those plays. But kind of now I feel like we we kind of uh, peaking at the right time and uh, we ready for that Super Bowl run. But, you know, as uh, being from Baltimore and uh, playing for the Ravens, like, it's just like a dream because, uh, you know, especially growing up, like, I played for the North Fort Rams. Okay. And, uh, you know, we, that was my uh, Pop Warner team. And, you know, there's a lot of kids out there that, that kind of be like, you know, I want to make it to the NFL. And uh, it was a blessing for me that I had people there that, that actually, like, confirmed that because I know a lot of times uh, a lot of people, they see a kid saying – they want to go to the NFL. They kind of look at it and be like, oh, 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 you can do it. But they don't really, like, believe in that kid. And uh, it's a blessing for me to have, you know, people who is, uh, like, mentors and family members who actually, you know, supported me and uplifted me, you know, especially going to, like, a small school and uh, being undrafted. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a long, it's a hard battle. But, I mean, right now I'm still battling, you know, trying to, trying to make my way in the NFL. But – it's it's a, it's a blessing, man. It's like every day you live in a dream. Like like they say, like when you when you're doing something you love, you're not really working. You just kind of living a dream. And that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Yeah, that's so that's so cool. That is right? dope. Like, that's so cool. All right, we, we so we got to know. Not named Ray Lewis. Who was your favorite Raven growing up? Oh, definitely Terrell Suggs. Like, okay, Sizzle. Sizzle T Sizzle. Definitely. I mean, like. Uh, like just growing up, especially at my position, like uh, I always been a pass rusher. Like you see uh, T Sizzle out there, you know he played with that that dog. He played like a Raven, as you might say, and uh, you know he play. He he not scared to be the villain. You know, go in there get to do the dirty work or uh, hurt somebody's feelings, and you know you just gotta respect that. You gotta love it, and you know you just want to model kind of your game after that. But you know, there's a bunch of you know legends that we didn't have for the Ravens. 
And, uh, you know, you get a, you got to respect a lot of them, like Joe Flacco, who's doing his thing right now. For now. Of course. We'll respect yeah, him for now. now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But, uh, a couple of weeks, get back to me. We'll talk about what yeah, we respect him. For sure. But you got like, guys like Lodi Nada and uh, Bart Scott, like we was talking about earlier. And uh, But, you know, you just got to kind of like, uh, you know, just look at those guys and they kind of laid the foundation for you. And you just got to, you know, try to live up to their standard that they, they set for us. Tyus, sure. who were, when you were growing up in Texas, we, I don't know we've ever asked this. Who were the guys that you, like, looked up to? Who were your kind of, like, sports heroes? Sports heroes? Um, I mean, I kind of grew up a basketball guy. Yeah. So I was a big LeBron James, you know, fan just – you know, all I, that dude does anymore is tweet about the Ravens, by the way. I know. Like, we got to get him a game. That's right? why. Like, he, is. he a fan. I'm sure he'll make it to a game. We got to get him out to a game. Yeah, he is a fan, man. man. But uh, really just kind of modeled the way I, the way I, you know, took on life. Just with, you know, my work ethic, just family, just uh, community stuff. I just, you know, appreciate the little things that he does, you know, for his community, you know, in Cleveland, where he's from. Uh, just how serious he takes his craft and going and putting in the extra time, you know, getting the extra baskets in, just, you know, working out whatever the case may be. And then just family, just how, you know, he's always looking out for his sons, his daughter, you know, his wife, just how he carries himself. There's like different. Screaming aspects. to check of the monitor when his foot was clearly on the yeah. line, you know, that type of stuff. Exactly, <laughs> man. So that's definitely a guy that I really appreciate that I've looked up to. That's know. awesome. That's sports awesome. guy, yeah. Hey, speaking of former Ravens, I'm going to give a quick tease. Press Box is going to be celebrating a former Raven and their charity here in the coming weeks. And we're not ready to quite announce all the details, but it's one of the biggest things we've ever done as a company. And we are really looking forward to it. And we're going to be telling you more about it in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Uh, before we wrap this first segment, I want to know what was the play from Sunday that you got you guys the most hype? Because... I mean, there were about a billion of them, obviously. I feel like everyone on the team made a one-handed catch at some point during the course of the game. What was the one for the, the, the one? You got to pick one that you were like, yo, I lost it on that one. I mean, I want to go defense, but I got to say when uh, uh, Zay, Zay likely caught that one-handed on fourth, fourth down, and seven. To, not even a catch, but the run after, like, that's he made that look easy. And I mean, like, but he, he was running hard. But I mean, that was... That was one of the craziest plays I done seen for sure. Yo, y'all have two top tight ends, top ten tight ends in the NFL right now. Absolutely, like it's crazy. And, and Kolar out here catching yeah, touchdowns right? too. Yeah. Don't forget Kolar. about that. That's wild. Tyus, what about you? What was the one? Um, I would probably say Roquan's yeah. one-handed. I wasn't expecting that. Either. It was insane. I didn't know he could catch like that. <laughs> <laughs> like in all honesty so i mean he had the one you know last year where you know he had a, a interception uh against the steelers and stuff like that but a one-hander how he did it real smooth and just uh cuffed it and got the run i was like oh wow he was going the other way before i even realized what happened exactly like, exactly i was like hold on what happened right here <laughs> and i just see him run i was like wow that's tough that was yeah crazy. that was that was wild yeah. and neither of us and nobody mentioned obj who like that look was, like oh, yeah, Odell Beckham. What, what like, yeah, it's too many. Or say and the touchdown. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's so many moments, right? That you can just you can even hit. put in Pat Ricard with his one. Oh, right? I, I, Project Pat, we know we love yeah, that. I know them big shoulders. It's kind of <laughs> hard to get the baby up. So. <laughs> so when Doff got his sack when he got off the ball, y'all yeah. see that? It was a lot of good plays. Yo, that was that was an awful lot of fun, man. Would y'all make some noise again for Tyus Bowser, Malik Ham, please? The Tyus Bowser Show is a partnership of Press Box and Great Eights memorabilia. And if you are a believer that on Wednesdays we wear pink, you should make your plans to be a part of Great Eights memorabilia's Mean Girls Brunch, Saturday, January 13th at 11 a.m. at Horizon Cinemas in Aberdeen. Your ticket includes a screening of the movie, a full brunch with local favorites, makeovers, face painting, photo ops, and more. Kids tickets, $29. Adult tickets, $39. Family four-pack, $109. Get your tickets right now, grade8smemorabilia.com with the number eight. When we come back in, we haven't talked yet about how the holidays went. We're going to do that. And we're going to talk about the last time that you guys were in this position and how it might be different this time around. We'll do that next. It's the Tyus Bowser Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know him, you love him. Our friend Chris Ruling is going to come stand up here when you see him. 
he'll tell you, you can go ahead and make your way over to say uh, hello to everybody, but please start lining up where Chris Ruling is. And if we don't get to you in the first segment, I promise you we will have plenty of time tonight. We'll get to you after segment number two. Back in here for segment number two of the Tyus Bowser Show. Rita and Glenn, Tyus and Malik Ham. We are live at Mother's North Grill in Timonium. Great crowd out here tonight celebrating an AFC North title. I feel like we can make noise for that again. I feel like... Hey, there is always something going on at Mother's North Grill. On Tuesday nights, music bingo from 7.30 to 9.30, and then open mic night as well. Wednesday nights, showtime trivia from 7 to 9, karaoke from 8 to 11, plus the food at Mother's. Uh, delicious. I had the jambalaya tonight. Big fan. Get out here to Mother's North Grill in Timonium. We love it here. All right, Tyus. We haven't talked. Like, how are the holidays? How is... Man, the holidays was good, you know. Uh, went to San Fran, got a win. Yeah, that was yep. number one. And then uh, my parents, uh, they all came out to uh, San Francisco, so that was a that was a really good time, just being able to spend time with them. And um, then my cousin, uh, one of my ages, one of my other good friends, they all came uh, to town, and they actually just left today, but uh, just got to spend time with them for New Year's. Got to hang out, move around a little bit, so. Overall, it's been a really good holiday for me, man. It's, it's awesome, been, man. been great to be around family. Saw your, saw your mom at the game. Yeah. Gave yeah. her a big, big old hug. Uh -huh. So that was always good to see her. I see you at the big old giant purple. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Had to stun yeah, them a we, little bit. We know you wasn't for the uh for the San Francisco 49ers because you know, see y'all purple. You the, already knew what was up. Even had the 49ers fans coming up to me like, I really don't like y'all, but that coat is coat. And I, was I like, know. It was. It was. <laughs> you. Uh, saw you was out, you know, this at celebrating at the restaurant for New Year's. I saw all oh, Tyus is doing it fancy. Yeah, for New you know, Year's. you know, I had to, you know, you know, suit up a little bit. But <laughs> no, it turned out good. It was real. It was real fun. Malik, I know you haven't gotten like the big contract yet, <laughs> but you are getting paid money to play professional football. Did you get the opportunity to like do something, take care of somebody, you know, buy by the parents something, anything like that for Christmas? I mean, like. uh, I I never really bought gifts for my family before, so I got to do it this year. I mean, like, uh, I ain't get the money like Tyus yet, but okay. <laughs> working on that. Working I'm working on, on it, but I mean, like, uh, of course, you, I try to take care of my mom, like always. You know, get her something special just for Christmas, and you know, it's good for me to just spend time with my family, also, because you know, uh, in the NFL, like, I, like from what I've been hearing, a lot of times you don't really get to like spend that much time with your family and you know this year being in my hometown I was blessed to be able to see him like through you know all the all the major holidays and uh it's been nice man for real it's really been nice all right so I'm gonna give I'm gonna I want to present this question but I'm gonna give it to Rita first because Rita's she's from Baltimore like Rita is Baltimore through and through Rita in what way are you most Baltimore like what about you is the most Baltimore thing about you? Um, it's, <laughs> How do you say you're from Baltimore without saying, saying yeah? Um, well, so, so th it depends, right? Like, I, I don't even know if I can say this because I, I know that I'm what I'm trying to say is not in a negative connotation, but anyway. Um, we're not live. All right. I mean, we're all live right, on well, the you internet, may, I mean, well, you take it. It's not a bad thing to me, but so obviously I'm an older Baltimorean. I won't, you know, y'all know I'm older. So our slang is a little bit different from, you know, his time or whatever. So if I say to you, this young lady right here, if I say to her, what up, whore? Don't you know who you know what I'm talking about? Okay. So that, that, that's. You said what up, what? Whore. Whore? Yes. You just called her a whore? Yes. But it's not, it doesn't mean what you think it means. That's tough. I still think that maybe we don't use it. Like, I still think that maybe I'm not using it. <laughs> but, right. I'm not using there's it. a whole website that That's sells. Loaded. There's a whole website that sells apparel that says Baltimore versus your horse. That's correct. And that's and because that's what we say. That's what older Baltimoreans say. If somebody if we don't like that person, so the young people say dummy. Yeah. We don't use dummy. Yeah. Four was yeah. dummy. 
Okay. Our your our dummy was whore. Okay. Okay, that makes more sense. So now it would be Baltimore well, versus your dummy. It just sounds so much. But, <laughs> but, oh, but I'm very Baltimore. I'm, I'm, you know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. Well, no, it's not a good thing, right? You get called a whore ain't a good thing. Yeah. But I'm very Baltimore because I I I am very you know I grew up sneaking out, telling my mama lies, going to Hammer Jacks on Sunday nights, you know, going to the Paradox on Friday nights. Well, she, I mean, I'm grown now. What she going to do? Exactly. <laughs> you know? I just looked at it. Just So, you know, uh, and if you were from here and if you were from a specific time, you know exactly. And Glenn probably knows Hammer Jacks too, but just in a different way that I knew Hammer Jacks. You was yeah, going we, to the concerts. Mm-hmm, I wasn't doing that. Mm-hmm. I was going to the party. I was at the very white version of Hammer yeah. Jacks. I, I was, was at the... <laughs> I was seeing Method Man and Red Man, Lil' yeah. Kim, oh. and them. Yeah. And he was going to go I see. Was going to see he was going to go see. I was going, yeah, correct. I was doing that. So, Malik, I present the question to you. In what way are you the most Baltimore? Like, what about you projects Baltimore the most? Uh, I know everybody probably, when you listen to somebody from Baltimore, you're probably listening for the two do and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, like, the first thing. But I would say, like, I feel like in Baltimore, we got, like, our own, like, music scene. Yeah. And, like, it's kind of different from a lot of places in the, from, like, just being in college and talking to a lot of people. Like, a lot of times, like, our artists, like, only people in Baltimore kind of, like, really know about them. And, uh, like, I'll say that. like Okay, so who, I this is where I'm going to show my age. Because, like, for Rita and I, it was, like, Los and Boss mm-hmm. Man. And but for him, it's probably, it's probably y- like, Scola. Yeah, YG. T- like, literally, in my, uh, yeah. my Spotify, I was looking at my Spotify uh, warp thing. And it was, like, YG Tech. Yep. YBS Scola yep. and uh just a bunch of Baltimore rappers on my thing. And it's it I say that's the most different thing because like it's literally like if you're not from the city, you're probably not gonna yeah, know a lot hurt. of them. Um, that's, that's, that's like I don't know who just, any like, of them just, big over. But yeah, I'd say definitely like shout out to YG Tech, you know, all them all them guys, they doing their thing. But I mean, like that's probably the, <laughs> Are you the, do you, you like how, do, hang did on you second. grow up like in club music? Yeah, I, I listen to, you know, club music. You know, you got the, you always got, like, the main ones that you kind of listen to, and you just kind of look out for them in the radio. But, I mean, like, I would say, like, it kind of, like, I still do, but I, I couldn't really dance like my cousins to it. Like, they used to be, they used to be moving, man. Like, I ain't even gonna lie. Rita, have you, do you do, do you, can you do a park high strut? Nah, I, I ain't grow up. I grew up on the football field. I ain't really grow up. Yeah. <laughs> but Tyus can do a park heist, right? I, I got to see that. <laughs> I ain't doing it right now. <laughs> By the way, Tyus made a face that I make so frequently now as a 40-year-old white man, which is like, yo, I've never heard of any of these people. I don't know. I don't know who he's talking at all. But now that you talk about the strut, it's crazy. Uh, I remember we played the Eagles in the preseason, and I uh, I got a sack, and I did it. That and was then, terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Hold on, hold on. That hold was on. terrible. That was that was terrible, man. You, you, uh, you saying the strutting was yeah, was it, wasn't good? It wasn't strutting. It wasn't. Strutting. So when you get the first regular yeah. season sack, we yeah. might not see it again. Nah, I'm a I'm a kept, definitely keep doing it. But I mean, like after the first one. When, after the preseason game, excited. my cousins came up to me, and it it was like a it was like 30, 40 people at the game, and all my cousins came up to me like, "Why? I gotta teach you how to do it. Like you ain't doing it right, cousin." I'm like, "How like, embarrassing you!" I'm like, "I don't even care. I, I got a sack at the NFL." Like, that's all. <laughs> but you can't celebrate me. doing your own city's dance and not do it right. Nah, mm-hmm. but I mean, like, of course I got work on it, but I mean, like, I was just, I was, was just excited. too, I was just you too excited. excited. You didn't I was know what way. you wanted to do. Yeah. So you like Scola. Do you know how to do the scramble Coke and Smack? Yeah, thing? shout out Scooter, man. Rest Scooter, in peace. excuse me. I said Scola. I meant to say Scooter. That's how I'm telling my age. Yeah. Um, Did you do the scramble Coke and Smack? See, you yeah. see. Yeah. Scramble. Uh, when, yeah, I don't know that okay. we want to be yeah. doing that. Yeah. When, when, uh, uh-huh. Hey, hey, hey. Well, hey, Odell did it when they played against when the, he was a Ram yep. and they played and he scored and, yep. and they I think they go up when he scores. He did it. Yep. And he I did. didn't like him then. I like him now. But <laughs> back then I was like, ah, he, he just gonna do the dance in, in the city <laughs> yeah. like that. And I felt some type of way. So do you know how to do that? 
Oh yeah, that's the that's one of the easy ones. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, what is it called? The crack scramble. It's called, oh, it's called the bird flu. It's, it's like something else. It's oh. called the bird flu. Oh, the bird flu. I want to I want to apologize <laughs> to uh, Jameson's family for <laughs> having the conversations that they're going to have to explain later. My fault. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> Blame. Yeah, they live actually in the hood. <laughs> um, Tyus, speaking of it, it's the Tyus Bowser show, Press Box 1057, the fan. Tyus, speaking of Baltimore, we mentioned you're wearing your cop and uh letterman jacket tonight. Which I love, by the way. You got to go out and check out Angel Reese yeah. a couple weeks ago. How cool is that? Oh man, it was it was definitely an experience. I'll say that. Just <laughs> driving to cop and state, it threw me off a little bit. I was I wasn't sure where I was at. Did you have to park at the mall? <laughs> no, I okay. didn't. I refused to hit that left on the mall. <laughs> I hit a right, went through the school, tried to find a little Well, you do spot. sound a lot like a 40-year-old white man right now. <laughs> yeah. I parked somewhere at like one of the uh, one of the student housing areas. So <laughs> that worked out well. Took a nice little 10, 20 minute walk to the gym and get there. And there's a whole line that's wrapped around the the building. So I was standing out there for about 35 minutes. Did you or so. attempt to do the like, don't you know who I am? Did you even think at about all? Okay, I mean, right. I walked past everybody, you know, people just, you know, waiting to try to get in. It's cold outside. <laughs> everybody got their tickets, their general admission tickets, trying to figure out why this line is so long. But uh, worked out, got got inside. And then one of the first things I did was try to see if I could find some Coppin State merchandise. And it was a guy who was selling, you know, just different types of sweat tops, shirts, jackets. I seen a letterman. So I was like, this could be something I could wear, you know, with anything. So I ended up grabbing that. And then it was just a packed crowd. I mean, that's the how wild you're a hooper. Yeah. How wild it's it's one of the coolest to me. Everybody kept asking, what was my favorite story of the year last year? I said that 10 million people watched the NCAA women's basketball yeah. championship yeah. was my favorite sports story of the year. Yeah. To see Angel Reese sell out. You know, it's not twenty thousand people, but that's still six, seven thousand no. people to sell out that arena. How cool is that? No, that was awesome, man, and that just shows you where women's sports is going right now. That just shows you, you know, the women in the sports world and just the impact that they have on the community, you know, on the world. And it's great to see that because those women they work hard. They're just as valuable as anyone here in this world, and it's great to see, you know, people like that supporting, you know, someone. You know, that's from here. That's from Baltimore and seeing her doing great things. Yeah, Malik didn't get quite 7,000 people yeah. out here tonight. Like, not quite. Yeah, yeah, not that, but not yeah, quite yeah. the same. It was like Angel Reese, Malik, like right. Yeah, maybe like right in there somewhere. Nah, shout out to her, man. She putting on for the city, man, for real. Yeah. I it's wanted awesome. to go with you, Tyus, until I looked at those tickets online, and I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna just go ahead and um, look at the highlights on Sports Center." How much were the tickets? Uh, they started at 150. One fifty. Yeah. Yes. You paid one fifty for a ticket. I didn't. That's why I wasn't there. <laughs> my ticket. My ticket. Well, I was looking at first, uh, and they was like twenty five dollars. Yeah. Well, the and resale then, was un was insane. But I waited last minute because I wasn't sure if I would make it. That was and smart. I ended up finding something that was like sixty five dollars. So that was smart. Yeah, yeah. I just I went to like Ticketmaster or something. And, figured out how to get one so i said i'll just i'll just well, i'll live vicariously through your story <laughs> yeah. so thank you for sharing yeah of course it was great all right malik uh, as a as a baltimore athlete is there anyone that you played with or against that you felt was a, a remarkable talent like yeah any sport too like growing any up sport. Yeah, definitely i mean like a first name i gotta say who i played against he he went to poly he went to other school i should say but <laughs> uh his name was Tyrese Chambers. He uh coming out this uh, ended year. Ended up playing at Maryland this yeah, year. Yeah. yeah, Maryland this year. He coming out of the draft this year. But he was – that was probably the best player I ever played against in high school, for sure. He's fast, fast. Yeah. Like, he's, like, Tyreek fast. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah, it's nuts. Like, definitely. that dude – I, I, it's insane. Yeah, but what uh, what position? Wide receiver. Wide receiver. Wide yeah, number. fast as hell. He played at Florida International for a few yeah, he years. He went to FAU. He uh graduated from Maryland this year. But I mean, uh, shout out to him. But uh, you know, you always got shout out like guys like Tavon Austin, and you know, uh, you yeah, know, I just mean, I feel like every every football player kind of yeah. just looked looked at him when they were younger. It was just like oh, it's that, wild you say that, right? Because I don't know, Tyus, how people feel about Tavon Austin and the rest of the country. But like here, yeah, it's like you're talking about God. No, I like, mean, I met him. I forgot. This was when uh, Deshaun Jackson 
had got to the okay. Ravens and he came in as well with him. And I got the chance to kind of talk to him, get to know him and stuff. Super cool dude. But I honestly didn't know how big of an impact he was for the city. It was of watching a video game. Bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. When I was younger, I got to go to uh dumb. I, I went to Dunbar's homecoming and I got to watch him play. And it was, it was crazy. Like, it, literally everybody in the city. It was the guys like him. And you got guys like uh, Stephen Smothers, who uh, went to Franklin. Yep. But I mean, like it, those are some guys, especially in the city where it's small, kind of. You rarely get people to kind of go out and you know make it to schools like West Virginia and stuff like that. So it's, it was good to see for sure. Have you ever had an opportunity to see or um, play guys like a? Uh... Blake Quorum that we're currently watching uh, in the national championship. St. Francis guy. He went to St. Francis. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think Blake was came out like a year after I left. Like, he was younger than me. I never got to play against him because, you know, St. Francis, they – yeah, they, they don't. They play that national schedule. Yeah, right? they, uh, Saint Sorry, Francis, they don't play sure. in in, yeah. in city schedules. Yeah, they uh they definitely St. Francis, but you know uh I never got to play against you know guys who kind of made it to that national championship level. But I mean, like I think that kind of it kind of helped me because it made me more intrigued when I came to the Ravens to kind of see like you know like who are they, are these guys really how they are or. Do I stand up to them? And, you know, uh, I just kind of went there with a blank head on kind of just trying to prove myself. And, you know, uh, at the end of the day, like, you know, when you make it to the NFL, you know, everybody's kind of like that good for real, for real. So you just got to kind of go out there and just go play. Hey, what company has the expertise and technology to make your home substantially more energy efficient, comfortable, and even virus free? It's AJ Michaels, heating and air conditioning in Baltimore and Annapolis at AJMichaels.com. So we talked about number one seed. You know, you've been there before, Tyus. Yeah. Is there a chance? And I don't I don't want this because you guys were so good in 2019. Yeah. And we're steamrolling teams the same way this team is steamrolling teams. But Reed and I were talking about on the radio the other day. We're like, we think this team might be better. Oh, I think it is. I really do. I really do think it is. I think from just an overall standpoint when it comes to togetherness, chemistry, uh, just playing fast, uh, playing confident, you know, having the confidence within each other to do, you know, your jobs. And I mean, even from the offensive side, when you talk about the talent and, you know, who Lamar has and the weapons that we have. I mean, you look at that 2019 team, we didn't have no like big name players besides, you know, Mark Andrews. So just be able to have talent on that side now and, you know, guys, he can actually, you know, throw the ball to. I mean, it's this is a whole different team than 2019, I can how, say. How important is it for you guys that were there in 2019 to divorce yourselves from that team? And because what we're seeing now is a lot of comparisons, yeah. right, because of the dominance that you've seen as of late, because of the similar records. but. How important is that for you guys to say, no, that's that's not what's going on here. What was then was then, what's now was now, and this is not the same situation as the last time. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure that conversation will come up, you know, after the Steelers game going into the bye week. But I mean, we um we kind of like come out with that same mindset of just trying to dominate each and every game, just how we did, you know, in 2019 then. You know, we go in with that mindset of just going out there, playing our brand of football, going out there and find a way to win. Because, I mean, every win is a great win, regardless of how you get it. So, you know, we just we just have that mindset right now, just, you know, taking care of business whenever that we come. And uh, I'm sure, you know, whether that's me or any other guys that's played on that 2019 team to be able to, you know, bring that up and let guys know, like, this is a you know, the team from 2019. This is a whole different squad. Yeah. Is there anything that you learn from that that you say, like, we might, I, I would like to do things differently this way, like how you prepare for the play. Like, you know, we all, even Rita finally came around to agree that, like, you know, it's it's better to have the bye week. Yeah. I mean, I, but, I honestly like the bye weeks. So is there anything that, like, you took from that year to say, hey, I, may, maybe we play a little more in the final, you know, I know this doesn't impact yeah. you. I understand that. But yeah. like, is there anything from that experience that you say, Hey, 
I compare it to the London thing, right? Like yeah. the last time the Ravens went to London, they lost. And John Harbaugh said, we don't know if it's going to be better, but we're going to do it differently because yeah. it didn't go well the last time. Is there anything that you would think that maybe you could do differently this time related to what happened in, in 19? Um, I mean, I kind of still stick with, you know, just this last game. I mean, it's not really something to work for besides, you know, trying to get the Steelers out of the playoffs. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I was still, you know, put Lamar on ice, you know, just your main guys on ice because you just don't want to try to take a chance, you know, with a game that doesn't matter. Yeah. And from that point, you know, just trying to trying to stay in a in a consistent groove, you know, throughout the week, whether that is walkthroughs and or just a light practice, whatever it is that we have planned, just continue to stay in a routine, continue to stay in a groove. So you're not going into a game week, you know, trying to, you know, get the dust off. You know, because then when that playoff when that playoff game come, it's a whole different mentality. Like it's a different type of physicality, speed, mindset, like intellectually. Like it's it's a whole different type of game when it come to that playoff. So I think the best part is just continue to stay in the groove, stay in the routine. You know, continue to keep you know our main guys. You know, in that same pace as for us throughout the week and. Like this week, just keeping them on ice, keep them away from the field. Just make sure we got our main guys, you know, that's healthy. Get those young guys, get them experienced, and you know. So then, when you get to the playoffs, you know, we're all on the, we're all in one accord. Yep. We all in the yep. same group. That's Look. Coach Ty is talking right there. Right, that's what it sounded. I. Amen. I want to ask you about that, too, in the third segment. I want to ask you about the words Coach Tyus. We're going to talk about that in segment uh, number right. three. Would y'all make some noise again for Tyus Bowser, Malik Ham. Hey, Great Eights memorabilia is bringing you fun live music events in 2024, including the inaugural Wake and Bake Brunch right back here at Mother's North Grill. The event features a live acoustic set from Harbor Boys and a themed brunch with delicious food from right here at Mother's. Tickets are available starting this Friday, January 5th at GreatEightsMemorabilia.com. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about it being Steelers Week. And I want to talk about Malik, about the fact that he played lacrosse growing up. We want to talk about that. That's all coming up. Segment number three, the Tyus Bowser Show. Third and final segment, it is the Tyus Bowser Show from Mother's North Grill and Timonium. Press Box 105.7, the fan, Glenn and Rita, Tyus, and Malik Ham. It is, uh, it's been a lot of fun tonight. We love Mother's North. Thursday nights at Mother's North, DJ from nine to midnight and then Friday and Saturday nights, live music every week here at Mother's North Grill. In I think I have a day party. I'm too old for nine to midnight. <laughs> really? Yes. But... I see you still be going outside sometimes. And I'll be home by 10 o'clock. What are you talking about? <laughs> 10 o'clock? Yeah. That's kind of early. I am an old lady. If you would have said like 11, Whoa. 11, 30, I'd be like, oh, okay. No, I, I want day part. I want four to nine. Oh, you Mothers, like day part. You got this nice little area over here. Little brunch. Do something well, that's from four why, to nine. That's why Chris is throwing the morning brunch party well, here. This is true. Weeks. So I'll, bake bake I'll go to Chris's. Party. There you go. That's where it's at. Yeah. That's where it's at. All right. So we teased it before the break. I've heard some stories. Some of your uh, former lacrosse teammates have checked in, Malik Ham. Yeah. Uh, in fact, one of them, our buddy Carson's here tonight. And then I heard from Nikki. That when you were a freshman playing lacrosse, you were like six times bigger than everybody else that was playing. <laughs> yeah. And everyone was legit terrified of trying to match up with you when you were on attack. The history of you and playing lacrosse, because when we said it, Tyus' reaction was like, yeah, yeah. What? What? You were and we can, I think we can all say it out loud. Not a lot of black people playing lacrosse, right? That's yes. right. Uh, uh, it's growing. It's growing. I, I agree. Know, with that. I know a couple coaches. I, and I, I completely agree. Mm, it's growing. No, he's right. Though. Yeah. He's right, though. No, no. But in Maryland, lacrosse is very, very big, and it's growing in in um, inner city schools for sure. Kyle Harrison, one of the greatest lacrosse players of all. Jim yeah. Brown, one of the greatest yeah. lacrosse yep. players of all Heard time. Heard about that. So, what was your background? Why lacrosse? Like, and how much did you love it? I mean, like for me, like. I always like physical sports for real. So like when it came to the spring, like everybody mostly did track in like track and field, but I kind of went to the lacrosse field and I got to give a lot of props to my coach, coach, uh, coach Merck and well, Anthony Ryan, coach Anthony Ryan, 
he was a main reason why I kind of stuck with it because I played uh I played my eighth grade in the eighth grade uh just for a little bit just to try it out and uh, I didn't play when I first got to high school but uh coach coach Merck kind of put me back into it and he put me at attack and uh, I just liked it because I could be like it was like a physical sport I could play kind of outside the football season. And I mean, they, and you could literally back everyone down. Oh there yeah, was yeah. dudes that look like me, and you yeah. were like, ha, yeah. enjoy. Like definitely, but I will say, like, so uh, we was when I went when I played for City, we was good, and uh, like when we played other city schools, like we was always good. But when, when we went to the county, like they they you had teams that have been playing with each other since they was like uh, kindergarten and everything. So we kind of always lost, but I mean, yeah, I they just kind of threw me the ball. <laughs> At attack, and I just kind of just play football out there, just trying to check it. <laughs> I to ask, to is there anything that translates from lacrosse to football that you could that you could you know use that you can cross reference in either sport? Oh yeah, for sure. So like, uh, especially at my position, like being an edge rusher, you kind of like if you pl- play across, you know how the crease is. Especially if you like at attack, you kind of how you gotta. Especially, I play real close to the crease because I just tried to back people down, but. You gotta kind of go around the little uh, circle if you don't know what I'm talking about, and you I gotta, don't. you gotta, huh? I don't, but I'm <laughs> yeah, listening. I'm so listening. Now. Basically, I'm a. It's it's gonna be quick, but I can explain it. Basically, don't you know the goal in lacrosse? Yeah. Uh-huh. And you know how it's like a circle that the. Yeah, I know that. So basically, if you are on the opposing team, you can't go inside that circle. Okay. So it's kind. Don't you know how we run the hoop? Yeah. It's kind of basically that. That's kind of what I did. Basically, okay. I just basically ran the hoop. Bend around the. I try to treat it like bending around the edge, and just trying to lay up the ball into the, into the hoop. And yeah, people was kind of always smaller, smaller than me. Rita, I gotta say this is officially one of my favorite shows ever yeah. because Tyus is over here looking like me, like didn't know who any of the Baltimore rappers were. <laughs> Here's Malik talking about lacrosse. He's like literally, like, dude, I don't know. I have no. Had you known anything about lacrosse before you arrived in Maryland? Absolutely. Okay. I used to watch the championship. I always knew about Johns Hopkins being really? a yeah. okay. major Hopkins lacrosse did. team. Um, I know they used to have the championship at the uh, – At M&T Bank Stadium. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I watched it. I was always interested in it. But I just really? never knew, like, the actual rules and the really? – what you say, the art? Yeah, the, say the, the crease. They the call crease. it crease. Yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't know what the crease was and all of that stuff, but I've always been interested in lacrosse. Man, Absolutely. and in the terminology, because I call a lot of lacrosse, like yeah. the terminology is other, it's otherworldly. Like yeah. you are using language that you would not use in any other. <laughs> like if I said a fogo, would that mean anything yeah. to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fogo the child. That's yeah, there you go. Exactly. And, that's, that's and you know what? Oddly, that's exactly what I was referring yeah. to. So you nailed it. Exactly. You nailed it. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the the college championships. Obviously, there's another college championship coming up. Michigan and Washington next Monday night. I, I noticed. Is there any part of you that cares at all, like because John's brother is the coach at Michigan? Do you feel any like? A connection. I'm, I'm kind of. I'll kind of root for them because John's brother is the coach. Or does that not do anything for you at all? I don't think that does anything for me. I think it's great to see, you know, two brothers that's doing great and fantastic things, especially in the sports world. But, um, I mean, I grew up in Texas, so I was rooting for Texas. But I like Washington. You know, I'm always a big fan of the underdogs. Michael so. Penix is on the Yeah, league. great player. Michael so, I mean, I'm kind of rooting for the Huskies to win it all. Yeah. That's just me. But I have a ton of respect for Michigan. I mean, they're super dominant right now. And like I said, it'll be great to see, you know, Harbaugh win the championship as well, you know, just to kind of bring on that legacy. So what about you, Malik? I mean, like, I just feel like there's a lot of – like I not not necessarily like I'm not playing in a game, so I'm not like, oh, they're gonna win, but I just feel like there's a lot of connections with Michigan right now, like with Harbs. It's a couple of good players that they got that's from Derek know, Moore yeah. who made yeah. that tackle at the end yeah. of the game. Definitely. It's, they got some players from here and uh that's I kind of I'm secretly rooting for them, like in, okay. a, in the long run. Okay, that's cool. I ain't I ain't gonna uh, get too upset if they lose, but I, that's who I'm. Uh, <laughs> Maybe if you tell everybody you're rooting for Michigan, it means more playing time next year, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Mike, Mike McDonald went there as well, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> no, you don't like that. There's yeah. some real connection. Definitely. There. I'm, I'm definitely rooting that. for them, though, for sure. When you look at the 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 current landscape of college football and 
the bowl seasons and how, you know, everything has changed, right? You know, there's kids opting out. There's been a lot of conversation I about- It's like, I wish I would have had that option. <laughs> 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 you know, there was a lot of conversation after the um, Florida State-Georgia game because um, Kirby Smart made a comment about, you know, the they have to fix this, which I think what will happen next year when they expand it to 12 teams. But outside of those 12 teams, there's been a, just a lot of, there's probably going to be a lot of more opt outs because, you know, if you don't have anything to quote unquote play for, you start preparing yourself for your next level. So I'm just curious to know you guys' thoughts on that. I personally um, don't have an issue with it um, because, you know, at the end of the day, these are these are guys that feel like that they need to start preparing themselves, you know, for for their next level. And, and I'm, I respect that. But I also um, we're selfish, acknowledge we're fans. I also we like acknowledge it changes how good the games are yep. now, because I, I don't know these players now. There's, there's third and, you know, second, third stringers that are playing and it's kind of diluted the the actual games of bowl season. Yeah. Um, I remember, I think it was the Georgia game. One of the, one of the announcers kind of spoke on that situation with, you know, guys leaving out. And uh, no, I think it was during that USC game where one of the receivers had declared for the draft, but he ended up uh, playing in that that bowl game as a way of, you know, adding film to his yeah. resume and yeah. things like that, where he was like, you know, I respect that. And then at the same time, I also respect, you know, Caleb Williams' decision to sit out because he's going to be the potential, if not the number one draft in the NFL. It's kind of like what we were just talking about with the final regular season game for you guys. Right. right? Like, why are you risking getting right. hurt? If exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, you can understand from that standpoint where, hey, this is a business decision. This is a lifelong generational decision for me and my family to live out my dream and to change my entire family's lives, including myself, where you have to make that decision to be like, you know, I'm just going to sit out of this. It's nothing personal. It's nothing, you know, as far as the team, I'm sure the team understands that. But you also have guys that you respect that is declaring for the draft, but it's like, I want to end this off the right way or I still got stuff to work for. And I feel like if players go with that mindset instead of just being like, yeah, I'm just not going to opt out and you really ain't working, especially if you're not like no first, second rounder. I mean, you honestly need to be, in my opinion, need to be playing in those games. Right. I mean, my senior year, I was in the senior bowl. I was, you know, in all that stuff just because mm -hmm. I come from a small school. I mean, it wasn't small, but I mean, I still want to use that opportunity mm -hmm. to up my draft stock. And from there, it helped me from whatever that they said, from a fourth, fifth round draft pick to being a late first, early second. And I can definitely tell you, being in those, being in those little things helped me, you know, in the long run. So I just feel like, you know, guys, unless you're a first or second round draft pick, solid, like, you know, for sure you're going first and second round. Like, I feel like you need to be able to play those games to continue to help your stock and get you to where you know you want to be. So. I think we all agree the real football programs end up winning their bowl games, even if their guys opt out. Shout out the University of Maryland. You know, like the <laughs> real football programs are still out here winning bowl games, yeah. taking out Auburn. Yeah. Have you ever yes, heard of that? Yeah, that was yeah. good, man. So some of us, you know, real programs. That's Absolutely. what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Hey, uh, what company has the ex expertise and technology to make your home substantially more energy efficient, comfortable, and even virus free? It's AJ Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning in Baltimore, Annapolis, AJMichaels.com. Those words Coach Tyus came up in the last segment. I've been meaning to ask you this all year. As you've, unfortunately, the last couple of years, not been able to be on the field as much, yep. seeing it from a different place. Had has those thoughts crossed your mind? I'm not talking about anytime soon, yeah. but like the idea of maybe coaching, maybe scouting, maybe something like that down the road, like just watching from a different way in a different place. Have you thought about any of that? I really haven't, but um, maybe I can kind of sense myself kind of, you know, looking at those things now that I'm thinking about it, just as far as, you know, the scouting part, you know, just, seeing certain type of guys play and just potential and, you know, just seeing plays from, you know, from the sideline and seeing what can happen or, you know, even from my position itself, 
just being an outside linebacker and seeing, you know, Malik and other guys play that position, knowing what's being called. And me putting myself in that situation is like, okay, I see this coming. This is what needs to be done to make this play work out for us. And you see the good and the bad sides of it. And from there, like, I'm always there to, you know, help critique, help critique those guys and, you know, just whatever in a way to help. And, you know, me thinking about it now, I mean, that could, that can be a possibility, you know, in the future, but, um, I haven't really just thought. No, about I get it. it. You got other goals. Like yeah. I understand. I'm not trying to like. No, no, no. I know, no, I know that. that. I know that part. But I'm just saying, from a coaching standpoint, I really just haven't thought about it, honestly. But I mean, that could be something. I've talked you know, to some other guys who like, bro, I can't do that. They, they, <laughs> these guys are working 14 hours a day, no, and I see it, and I'm like, man, uh, that's the part where I'm thinking, I'm like, man, I don't just feel like sending no desk for right. 14 hours looking at film. Sleeping in the office. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if that's me. Yeah, right. I, I think I'm good too. Yeah. I think I'm all right in that department. All right. So the other thing you did mention it a second ago, it is it is Steelers Week. It is. Or hate the Steelers Week. It is Steelers Week. Or, or whatever the you Steelers want. Week. If F you want to put a little week. bit of if you want to put a little bit of hot sauce on it, yeah. you know. There are I, I think this is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. But there are people in this town who are like, I think the Ravens should not even bother trying on Saturday and try to knock the Bills out of the playoffs. Let the Steelers win and maybe the Bills stay out of the playoffs. Well, the Bills, got, the, the, ironically, the Bills still have an opportunity to win their own division. They so sure get do. all of that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's and they control their own destiny. Exactly. Can you explain, because I try to do it, Rita tries to do it, tries to explain to people how stupid that thought process is. We're not NFL players. Can you please explain how insane the thought process would be of let's just go ahead and purposely try to lose this game. No, nah, that's wild, honestly. <laughs> uh, that's how you get hurt especially against the right? Steelers. Like, you don't purposely lose against the Steelers. Thank you. I'm way more interested in the Steelers not making the playoffs. The me, me too. Like, what are we talking about? And Absolutely. and you being the one to be able to do it, to knock them out. I feel It feels like the cherry on the top. Absolutely. Because, I mean, not too long ago, they did that to us where we were trying to get in the playoffs. Yep. And they beat us that's out. That's a fact. I mean, that's just. We've had our Christmases ruined. Today. Exactly. So, I mean, I want to return that same favor, man. <laughs> Malik, what would that mean to you, right? Like, if you get to watch their faces after y'all just eliminate the. Malik, of course, knows the F the Steelers yeah, as much nah, as anybody. I'm not going to lie. I still remember uh, Christmas Day being mad because Antonio Brown getting the ball. Yeah, we, we don't like talking. Remember. We try to not say that name. Our, we remember. I, I remember that. But, uh, I mean, like, even as a competitor, like, you. You never gonna go out there and, and just like lose, just lose. <laughs> like, that's like even like if you know the guys in our locker room and you you know the Ravens in general, like we wouldn't even bring they wouldn't even bring in uh, somebody with that kind of mindset. So you know wh whoever's out there and uh, they're gonna give it to y'all. Like you can guarantee that. For sure. No doubt, no yeah. doubt about it. All right, and I mean at the same time, whoever the Bills would play, like I'm sure it'll be. I don't know. Um, was it the? Um, it was one of the teams in the AFC where it'll be a pretty good battle. Dolphins. So, I mean, they play the Dolphins. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah they be, play the Dolphins for the division on out. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, they'll pretty much beat themselves out. So yeah. you ain't got to worry about it yourself. Like, yeah, there you go. Just let them do what they got to do, and then what we play, you know. And we repeat exactly. F the Steelers. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Make some noise for Tyus Bowser, Malik Ham, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, the Ravens are still just the second choice to win it all. Get them at plus 350 at Superbook if you believe that another Purple Festivus is coming. Download the Superbook app. Visit Superbook.com. Use the code GlennClark23 when you sign up. Receive a same-day first bet match up to $250. Win or lose from Superbook. And remember that if you or a loved one has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit HelpMyGamblingProblem.org for free confidential services. I love that, by the way. What? I love that. There's still some disrespect. They, they just know what they're doing. They, they, just, know, they know what they're doing. They Y'all the Ravens don't we, like the hang disrespect. On. We didn't really talk about San Francisco. We didn't. They didn't respect you guys. At all. And and, and everybody, that's why I think that they know what they're doing. Yeah, right? Keep that disrespect coming.
Hey man, we just let y'all talk. You know what did Roquan say? We we talk with our pads. Yep. 100%, yeah, hundred percent. Keep the receipts. That's how we move. Talk with our pads. Hundred percent. That's how we move. Malik, thank you so much for coming out and hanging out with us tonight. No, I appreciate y'all. It's been a it's been an honor for real. It's been nice. We've appreciate been trying to make this happen all season long. We love Malik. He's awesome. Yes. And um, you know, as much as we love everybody, it really does mean more to us when we see one of our own living out dreams and getting that opportunity, man. So. Yeah. Appreciate it's that. it's incredible to see. Yeah, and we wish you uh, so much success here in Baltimore, hopefully in 2024 and beyond. Oh, yeah, for sure. Appreciate that. Tyus, love you, bro. Love you too, man. Always appreciate you. Don't know if we're going to be able to pull it off in the playoffs. We're not giving up hope that we couldn't do another show. We just don't have anything scheduled at the moment, so stay tuned. If we can make something happen, we'll make something happen. And who knows, maybe a live show in Vegas, right? Like That's what I'm praying for. That's, that's that would be nice. Yeah, that'd be pretty dope. Tyus, would you be interested in doing a live show in Vegas? Absolutely. Oh. I love this. Absolutely. I love this. All right. Let's let's kind of let's let's put that tentatively in our calendar. I like that thought process. Like you that. know, in pencil, just to make just to kind of speak it into existence. Thanks to everybody for coming out all season long. Thanks to mothers, press box, grade eights. Superbook, HelpMyGamblingProblem.org, and A.J. Michaels. For Rita and Tyus, I'm Glenn. This has been the Tyus Bowser Show.